Late afternoon in the jasmine fields of Kanuj in central India, workers collect the buds of the fragrant white flower, which only opens at night. An entire community depends on the growing and processing of jasmine, one of around 600 plants used in Ayurvedic medicine. Ayurveda means knowledge of life. It's the oldest surviving healing system in the world. Ancient texts describe herbal alternatives to conventional allopathic medicines for a spectrum of health problems, particularly chronic conditions like arthritis, skin diseases, and insomnia. It isn't tribal and folk healing the way it is known, you know, the way traditional medicine is known in other countries. It is a system of medicine by its own right. I do feel that uh, it can offer a range of applications which could work hand in hand with allopathy or as standalone therapies. Ayurveda is big business. Ayurvedic products have an annual turnover of a billion US dollars in India alone. At this Calcutta pharmacy, queues of people eagerly await the latest delivery of an Ayurvedic herbal remedy, marketed under the name Asmon. They believe it has a remarkable effect on asthma. This is something new, we just help people, so you find so many people standing, you know. It is having some effect, that's why people are buying it. 13 year old Sarnak Bhagji was among the first to try the new remedy, a secret mixture of seven traditional Ayurvedic herbs. Sarnak has suffered from asthma since he was a baby. During attacks, the airways in his lungs would become constricted, making it difficult for him to breathe. I could not go for swimming, uh, I could not stay in the sun for a long time. I could not run for a long time, I could not take cold baths, yeah. and such restrictions was there. Conventional drugs are available for asthma, Come on, uh -huh, run up. but they include powerful drugs like steroids, which can affect children's growth. The makers of Asmon say it treats the condition with no side effects. Sarnak, at least, is convinced it's worked for him. Very free from the disease, I'm happy with it. Oh, oh, oh. Sarnak now needs no medication at all. For the first time in his life, he can enjoy all the normal school activities. But the research team who developed the drug know that patient recommendations alone won't convince the medical world. The Indian authorities now want Ayurvedic treatments to be standardized and subjected to trials in the same way as conventional drugs. It is important to show when you sell it as medicine as long as it goes as food supplements, it's all right. But as uh, the minute you call it medicine, it has to qualify through proper uh, research on, uh, you know, through clinical trials. Even the Indian military is taking an interest. These soldiers are among 300 volunteers taking part in a trial of an Ayurvedic treatment to combat the effects of altitude. India's border areas include the Himalayas, so serving at high altitude is common for Indian soldiers. As you keep going up in altitude, the barometric pressure drops, thereby the hypoxia or lowered oxygen tension is a major problem in high altitude. High altitude is always associated with cold, so these are the two primary physical stressors at altitude. Temperature is okay? Doctors at the Defence Institute for Physiology and Applied Sciences in Delhi use this vacuum chamber to simulate the thin cold air of the mountains. As air is pumped out of the chamber, the oxygen concentration drops and the temperature plummets below freezing. The soldiers feel cold and their blood pressure rises. Sensors on their bodies register these physiological responses to the simulated altitude. Half of the soldiers taking part in these trials have taken a tablet of an Ayurvedic remedy made up of 39 herbs. Results so far suggest the herbal preparation helps the body generate heat and regulate blood pressure. He is showing much increase in his blood pressure, that is 136 by 91 millimeter of mercury. This shows that this man is showing more effect of high altitude than the man who has taken the pills. The Institute is also looking at how training in yoga may benefit soldiers. Masters of yoga, known as yogis, are renowned for their ability to overcome mental and physical stress, including extreme cold. Here at the Institute, they're analyzing how learning yoga may help soldiers adapt to the cold at altitude. By monitoring body temperature, 
they found that people trained in yoga reacted quite differently when exposed to the cold. But the rate of fall is much steeper in the control group as compared to yoga group, which sustains a relatively much higher core temperature than the physical training group. India's traditional systems of healing may have been around for thousands of years, but as modern medicine puts them to the test, this ancient wisdom is finding a new lease of life.